uh, Rachel, we're going to make a Thai aubergine curry, yes? Correct. Tell me about this one then. Well, I've got some little aubergines. Uh, so I'm going to fry some or aubergines. Yes. Uh, and then add some spices to them. Okay. So and some spring onions. And then make a green curry paste. Um, I'm going to put oil. Okay. Uh, rapeseed oil. Again, yes, yes. which is good, so it's all consistent. Yes, indeed. And then these little aubergines, but as I said, you could just as well use big aubergines, but I thought these look a bit lonely in the shop. So, so let's just have that, it's a bit higher because you want the oil, the heat to be nice and high because otherwise the, they just absorb the oil yeah, like a do, sponge. Yeah, they do, don't they? So you're just basically slicing these up. Yep. How many are you using roughly? I've got seven little ones. Okay. But you prob that's probably like three normal ones. Right, okay. So we go with the measurement, three, three of the big ones or yep. seven little ones, that's yes, fine. Six, six or seven. Because they do disintegrate quite quickly, don't they? If you well, they can, they can do, but that's part of, the, part of the reason why we're keeping the skin, skin on. on. Yeah. Because A, for the colour, mm. which is, as you see, they start to cook more, they become more uh, purple. Yeah. Uh, and also that stops them disintegrating. And also because, as we've talked about before, most of the nutrients are just underneath Under the skin. skin. Yeah. So if you were to peel them, which You've I don't think that, many people yeah. would do, then you would have lost that. And Ginger, uh, nice authentic Thai ingredient, but you know, used by many cultures, many cuisines. And how many does this so feed? So half as better. You know, well, because they're quite would, decent amounts, aren't they? Yes, but as a side dish, yeah. this would be for four or for six. Okay. And if you wanted to serve this as a, as a main dish, it would probably be for two. And then I'm going to add the chilies. Okay. Uh, so again, like last time, you are keeping the seeds. Yes, I like a bit of heat. Yeah. I'm not frightened of heat. So there we go. So the colours coming along as well now. So yes. You've got red, purples, quite a vibrant curry, isn't it? Yeah. Well, why not? Green. No onions, but. No onions, but spring onions. Right. Okay. Why? Any reason? Again, just it's for colour, it's for something a bit different. If you didn't have any spring onions, you could easily use red onions. Right. Or, or white onions, okay. as you wish. And roughly, is it a half an onion, an onion? Oh, well, I would say I've got two spring onions, so I would say that is half an onion. Okay. Or red onions are less strong. Yeah, you can use a, a whole one, probably. Yeah. And add the garlic. Now skin's changing colour again, yep. going browner. So you have a really nice mix of colours. And then we're going to serve that with white rice, okay. jasmine rice, right. and a Thai noodle salad. With the garlic, yep. you could easily put it through a press or you can use the garlic that you can find in, um, in jars. Right. So once you put okay. the garlic in, you do have to be careful because you do not want to burn the garlic. Right, okay, so keep stirring at Keep this stirring, time. yes. The neck of lamb forms a very tasty, tender, easy and versatile meat option. One key benefit is that it's very quick to cook. It's also a good value cut of meat. The neck fillet also tends to do a good job when used in kebabs once taken off the bone. It's also especially good when used in marinades or with sauces. The neck of lamb can also cater for a wide variety of tastes. My name is Yusuf. Um, we've been established for over 40 years now. It's a family business and we're serving the local community with uh, meat requirements. We've really adapted to the needs of our consumers, the second generations of our uh, the community who come to us now, they're asking for products which you know they see on TV and what the chefs are cooking, they say, oh, I want this and I want that. So one of the other favorites is the actual, uh, for the, from the neck, from the lamb neck of making, uh, removing and make it, getting a fillet from there from the quarter and then basically chopping it up and making lamb kebabs from that. You know, that's a really popular one, ideal for barbecue season. And uh, that's something which is again, uh, a very popular item. We've 
Yes. Rachel, and all I'm going away. to make the green Thai paste. Okay. So I'm going to use a green chilli. Okay. So that's a decent sized green chilli, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And I'm just going to roughly chop it because I'm going to put it in my little machine. Yes. Uh, which is one of these kind of like a like a, a blender, just an upside down one like this. So yes. I put all the bits in. I've got the zest of a lime, right, which okay. I have grated onto the parchment, and then uh, two little bits of uh, lemongrass, which yes. again you could get out of a jar. Yep. And because it's going in here, I'm just going to give it a bit of a smack first, right, okay, so that I don't overwhelm my little cutters, and also because it's tough, isn't it, lemongrass? It, it, re it really is. Mm. You wonder why it's called grass, actually, because yeah. it is <laughs> so, so tough. Let's put that in as well. Okay. One big chilli, some salt and some sugar. Yes. How much? Uh, a a half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of sugar. Okay. And then eight tablespoons of... Now this is the key ingredient, it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. It is, it's this is what makes co it. coconut milk, which makes yeah. everyone think, oh, that's, that's definitely one, two. Right. And then a handful of coriander. Okay. If you do, don't have coriander, you, you could just use you could just use um, basil, but again, it's nice. It's you get nice the flavour, don't you? You yeah, get the taste, exactly. the smell, and this gives it colour, doesn't it? It does. The coriander. It does indeed. Right. Right. Now put it in my magic machine. Okay. Okay. Pulse it. Yeah. There we go. And the, the nice part about making your own curry paste. Yes. Is that you know that you've got all the nutrients in there, whereas if it's from a jar, yes. all those nutrients probably haven't survived being okay. in the jar. Right. So let's pop this in. If you can stir that around. Yeah, you make sure the heat's there. Yeah. Okay. I would cook more. it just a little bit more to right. bring out the flavours yeah. of the, of the things we that we put, we put in the puree. Yeah, so now you're getting it bubbling up. So you get this mix mixing or fusion of yes, the flavours exactly. that you want. Exactly. Okay. And just cook it through a little bit and also that allows the aubergine, which like to absorb flavours. Yes. And so those are the flavours that they're absorbing, the, the flavours of the lemongrass and the coriander and the chilies. Right. Okay. That looks great. And yep. then and it stayed intact as you said. Yes, it would. exactly. Exactly. And you have the red, the red of the chili contrasting with the green. Okay, you're just going to pour it in, yeah, I guess, you, you, yeah. And you scrape. There we go. There we go. Great teamwork. And then we will garnish that with more Perfect. coconut milk. I'll let you and, do the tying oh, okay. up. <laughs> then I like to have it quite a lot of coconut milk as the garnish. And some fresh. Yes. Is that coriander again? Some fresh it, this coriander, cor coriander. Just rip it apart in your hands. Yeah. On it goes. And some Thai basil. But if you can't find Thai basil, then ordinary basil works just as well. Fabulous. And then just a drizzle of that on the top for contrast. And there you go. Oh, there we go. Fabulous. If you want a light alternative to other cooking oils, rapeseed is a great choice and has experienced a surge in popularity. The oil can be drizzled as a salad dressing or heated to fry or bake. It's low in saturated fat, so has been hailed for its health benefits and also has other nutritional bonuses which reduce cholesterol and help to maintain healthy joints, brain and heart function. As it's high in monounsaturated fats, it is one of the only unblended oils ideally suited for light frying. Homegrown rapeseed oil has been heralded as the British olive oil and his flavour is more earthy and nutty. So that goes here with the rice. Yes. And you've also made um, a salad. Yes, with I made noodles. I made a Thai noodle salad. 
uh, which is using lots of Thai flavours, using uh, Thai noodles and cucumber yes. and carrot and red onion, a, a little bit of um, spice, some chilli flakes, some fish sauce and some rice vinegar, so really bringing all the flavours together, See, which will go... Quite an oriental yeah. theme, isn't it, really? Yes. And you're bringing that out. Yes. And as we say, if you want those recipes, you can go to our website, healthykitchen.tv, and they can follow it step by step there because you've got them for all the accompanying Absolutely. dishes as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And do interact with us on social media. I would love to see what, how people make these things, how people serve these things, how they enjoy them. I, that would be, I'd really enjoy that. Great.